Hey guys! Today I'm going to be showing you how to create this cute little illustration that you can use for children's storybooks, stationery, and even greeting cards. At the end of this video, I'm going to be showing you how to make a greeting card that you can sell online or give to your friends and family. In this tutorial, I'm going to be using the Sublime Watercolor Kit and the mixed canvas that is included in the watercolor kit. Everything will be linked down below in the description box. If you don't have this brush kit, you can use whatever watercolor brush you have or even use Procreate's brush from the airbrushing category. Now, we are going to bring in our sketch. If you want to follow along, you can download my sketch that is linked down below or draw your own characters. Now, I'm just going to resize them. That looks pretty good. Now let's bring the sketch layer to the very top of the paper. But now it looks like the paper texture is gone so we're going to make this layer multiply. Now the paper texture is showing up. Perfect. And let's make a new layer and bring it to the bottom. That will be our painting layer. Let's start coloring the girls. So to start off, we're going to make sure that we're on the coloring layer. And then select um, whatever color you want. I have a swatch already made. And I'm going to use the bold medium brush. And you can start to color in her skin. I'm going to speed it up. Don't worry about um, going outside the lines because then you can just erase them like this. One thing that I would like to encourage is to make a new layer for each new element that you are coloring. The reason is because if we need to make any edits later on, these separate layers will really help since they aren't really interrelated. Using this pink, I'm going to color in her bow as well as the bow that's on her basket. Remember guys, you don't have to follow this color scheme at all. You can be creative and make everything different. <laughs> The basket will be on a whole new layer right below the pink dress layer. I'm going to make a new layer for the other cute girl now and we're going to start coloring her skin. Once we're done, I'm going to make a new layer again and then start to color in her hair. Now we make a new layer for her dress and I'm picking an emerald green. This part is totally optional, but I'm going to add in some decorations to her dress. It's just stripes. And at the end, I'm going to add in some flowers. They look pretty cute now. We could be done here at this point, but I want to give them cute little cheeks, so I'm going to make a new layer and select this light rough edge brush and give them little cheeks. At this point, we've done the first painting layer, but we want to give them some dimension, right? So then we're going to make a new layer to add in some shadows. First, we're going to make a new layer on top of the pink dress layer and make that a clipping mask. I'm going to select a darker pink and use the same light rough edge brush and go over areas that may need shadows. 
since these are just cute characters, we don't have to be scientific about the placement of these shadows. We can just assume that the light is coming from the left side and therefore we make the right side a bit darker with these brush strokes. If some of these lines have harsh edges, you can soften them up with the basic blending tool. Let's just go over some lines and soften it a bit. Now we're going to make some shadows in her hair, so select the hair layer. And we're going to use a different method this time. We go into the selection tool, freeform, and then select whichever area you think will be a little bit darker due to the shadow. I'm going to feather that out to about 3%. Go to adjustments and go to hue, saturation, and brightness and make that a bit darker. And you can play around with that. And I'm going to do that to the other side as well. So the light source is probably hitting the top of her head area, so I'm going to select the top of her head with the selection tool and then go back into the hue, saturation, and brightness and change the brightness level so that her head is a bit lighter on the top. You can use this method anywhere in the drawing to make it more three-dimensional. For smaller areas like the lines around her face, I'm just going to use my brush to go over any shadows. It's easier to draw these in for smaller areas. The shadows that I'm drawing are quite subtle as you can see. If you want to make shadows that are more dramatic, then you might want to select a darker color. Next, I'm going to make some shadows on her hair. So we're going to make the front bangs kind of darker because the sun is obviously hitting the back of her head. So I'm just going to use the selection tool as we did before. And then go to hue, saturation, and brightness and just play with the brightness. That should be good. Feel free to use this method anywhere that needs a large shadow. For her pigtails, I'm going to draw in the shadows to add depth in certain areas. At the end, I'm going to brighten up the back of her head by using the selection tool method again. So I've added shadows to her arms and legs. And now I'm going to use the selection tool method again to add a shadow to her dress. Because her dress has a pattern, I think the selection tool method will make things a lot more simpler. The light is coming from the left side, so we're going to make a selection on the right side. As you can see, this is really a repeat and rinse kind of a practice. I hope you guys are enjoying this tutorial right now. Um, I'm sorry if I sound a little bit like a robot. I'm not used to filming voiceovers yet, so I gotta work on that. Let's make a shadow underneath them. So make a new layer and bring it to the very bottom. And select a very light gray and grab the watery thin brush and we can just make shadows like that. If you don't like these shadows, you can always turn them off like this. Now, the next step that I'm about to show you is totally optional. I'm going to make a new layer on the very top and add some decorations like this. This brush is something that I'm working on right now, so it's not ready yet, but um, I think the border looks pretty cute. And once you have the final image ready, you can save it. Now I'm going to show you how to make a card in Canva. So select the card template 
and place this image on the second half of the card template and basically you just added some text like this and you can save it as a printable card and sell it on Etsy, Creative Market or give it to your family and friends. So I hope you guys enjoyed this easy watercolor tutorial today. You can utilize this method for pretty much anything and I hope you guys have fun with it. Thank you so much for watching guys. Make sure to subscribe if you'd like to see tutorials like this on a weekly basis. See you next time!